Hi, this is Math 6, Unit 5, Lesson 2, using diagrams to represent addition and subtraction. And this whole lesson here in my book tells me that it's an optional lesson, so maybe one that you do and maybe one that you don't do. Depends on kind of what your background is in math and what you learned last year, maybe in fifth grade or so. So here we go. Let's look at the first one. It says changing values. Here's a rectangle. There it is. What number does a rectangle represent if each small square represents one or one tenth or one hundredth or one thousandth? Okay, so if each one of these was to be a value of one, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so if each one had a value of one, we would say the whole thing would be ten. Okay, you okay with that? Now if each one was a tenth, We'd have one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tenths. Well, how do you write ten tenths? Well, that becomes one, <laughs> just like this. That's what you end up with. All right. And again, you could do that by doing what? You could do mul you could do uh, point one, and you can multiply it by ten. Or if you wanted to add up ten of those on your own just to kind of see if that's accurate, you certainly could, right? So here's five, that becomes 0.5. If I did 0.5 plus 0.5, what do I have? Five plus five is 10, and that decimal stays right there. So I have one. Kinda got the idea there? So knowing that, knowing that what we've done is we've moved the decimal here, in this case, we moved it over one that way. We moved it over one this way. If we're gonna move it over one this way, we end up with 0.10. And then to get this next one, we'd move it over one space, and we'd end up with 0 0.01. Again, same idea. If I took 0 0.01 and I had 10 of those, let's multiply by 10, what would you do? 0 times 1 is 0. 0 times 0 is 0. We have a placeholder 0. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 0 is 0. So we have 0, 1, 0. If I have to count my decimals, I have two digits behind the decimal there. So I go hop, hop, two spaces, and I have 0 0.10, okay? And the same is true here. If I did 0 0.001 times 10, I'd have zero there for that one there, and one times one is one, and then one times zero is zero, one times zero is zero. We have one, two, three behind the decimal, so we go one, two, three, and 0 0.010. So just like we said there, okay? So here's a square. And what number does the square represent if each small rectangle is 10, a tenth, and then that crazy one there? Okay, so if this is, there's 10 of them here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So basically, if I have 10 times 10 of those, then the square is going to be a total of 100, is what the square represents. If each one is a tenth, then it's a tenth times 10, which is the same as 1. And this is going to be, I have 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100 thousandths. So if I had a 100 thousandths times 10, that's going to be equal to 0. Point, and then instead of having 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, we're going to do 1, 2, 3 zeros, and a 1 there. So I have 10, 100,000, 10 thousandths. So 1, 10 thousandths right there. All right. Okay. So, activity two. You may be familiar with base 10 blocks that represent one, tens, and hundreds. Here are some diagrams that we'll use to represent base 10 units. So a square is one, a medium rectangle is a tenth, and then we have medium square for a hundredth, a thousandth, and ten thousandths. So basically, you'll see on the next page, it's gonna look something like this, right? We have the large square, that's the one. The tenth is gonna be a medium rectangle, which they draw like that, a tenth. Okay, a square, it's gonna be one of these guys like this. There's a square for the hundredth. A small rectangle, they draw like this almost, like a dash, I'll draw it as a dash for my stuff. And then the small square is a 10,000th, would be like a dot, okay? So that's kinda of how I'll draw mine as we go through these next activities here. So that's a one, tenth, hundredth, thousandth, and then 10,000th, just like that. Now here's their picture, which is in your book as well. And we can see it here, right there. All right, same idea. So here's a diagram that Priya drew to represent, we have 13 
Now, the way I do this, I say this is tenths and this is hundredths. We have 13 hundredths. Draw a different diagram that represents 13 hundredths and explain why your diagram and Priya's diagram represent the same number. So for her 13 hundredths, what did she do? She took out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of the hundredths and just put them all together. Is there another way to do that? Sure there is. She could take 10 of these hundredths here and group them together or bundle them together to make a one-tenth stick like so and then have three hundredths. So essentially what she's doing is she's saying I have one-tenth and I also have three hundredths and so we combine those together to have thirteen hundredths. So that would work there. Here's a diagram that Hondra represent, um, in this case here, 25, and we have 10 hundred thousand, so 25 thousandths. Draw a different one. So here's his 20, and there's the 5. So draw a different one than that might be there. Well, in this case, I don't have anything I can group together, but I could ungroup or unbundle something here. We could unbundle this and make them into thousandths. So we could keep this as one of the tenths and then instead of having that I can make it into one two three four five six seven eight nine ten of those and I already had the five so one two three four five and now I have the same number what I've done is I've taken that tenth and I broke it up into ten of the I'm oh, sorry tenth, that's a hundred sorry I take a hundredth and I break it up into ten of the thousandths because that's equivalent there. Okay, so that's that uh, regrouping or um, bundling, whatever you might call it, depending on what your teacher taught you before. All right, and our last one here, or the last one, sorry, got ahead of myself. For each number, draw or describe two different diagrams that represent it. Okay, so for a one tenth, we could draw the long stick like that, that would work there. Or we could do 10 of the hundredths because 10 of those would be equivalent to that right there. For the two hundredths, we could draw two of these, right? Or I could do one of the hundredths and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of the thousandths to make the same thing because that can bundle up into that right there. Okay, and then for the thousandths, I could do four of them. I could do one, two, three, four, be done with it. Or I could do one, two, three, and then break one of these up into the ten thousandths with the small ones one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, just like that. So those would all be different ways of representing that one there as well. Let's look at number four. Use a diagram of uh, base 10 units to represent each sum. Think about how you could use as few units as possible to represent each number. Okay, so we have three hundredths and five hundredths. So those are gonna be the squares. So that's a three, one, two, three. And then a five is one, two, three, four and five. So what do I have all together? I have, in this case here, I have eight hundredths all together is what I have. When I look at B, I have six thousandths and seven thousandths. So that's gonna be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, I could group some things, right? I could take six of these, and also one, two, three, four, four of those. And if I group those together, I could turn that into one of these, right? So now what do I actually have? I actually have no tenths, but I have a hundredth, and I have how many thousandths left? Three of them, okay? And so that would work there. So this becomes that one right there. For this guy, we have four tenths, and our tenths we said are the um, like the bigger rectangles, like so. So one, 
two, three, and four, plus seven tenths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I can take four of them, plus another one, two, three, four, five, six. We put all those together. And when I take 10 of the tenths, that's equivalent to one big block there. So what do I have? I have one whole, and I also have one tenth. So I have one tenth. I could write it like that, or just write 1.1, and that's what you get when you add those together. All right. So here are two ways to calculate the value of 26 hundredths and 7 hundredths in the diagram. Each rectangle represents 1 tenth, and each square represents 1 hundredth. Okay, so here we see we can do a calculations. We have 0.26 plus 0 0.01, and they're doing 6 plus 7 is 13, and 1 plus 2 is 3, and then zeros there, and the decimals line up, and we get 33 hundredths. Over here, you can see we have 20, and this is 26. I'm looking for 26. Uh, we have 20. Um, 20 and 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then do 7 more, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, hmm, something's a little bit off there, why am I not seeing something quite right, huh, that's interesting, um, and I didn't count them before, <laughs> so, uh, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, this is 26, there should be another one here, so let's add it, there should be one there for 26. Not sure why it's not there. So what we're doing is we're going to take 3 and then this 7, and that becomes a different bundle, right? So what we're doing is we're saying if we take 10 of these, it turns into this bundle here, another tenth, right? And what I'm left with are 3 of the hundredths, and then I have 3 of the tenths right there. So this 1 represents that same one there. It's there because I, what happened is I have a bundle of there and I have three left over there. Okay, so let's so we can show it with a calculation and with a diagram there. So that's kind of what we you know we talk about here. This is bundling or bundling, and that's what you see happening there. Let's look at number two. Find the value of 0.38 and plus 0.69 by drawing a diagram, and can you find the sum without bundling? All right, well, 0.38 and 0.69. So the 0.3, this is like our larger uh, line, so it's uh, one, two, three, and the eights are gonna be our squares, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and we're gonna add to that six, uh, ninths. So again, we could do it. Oh, we could do the side if we want to. It's not as convenient. But here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the ninths are going to be squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. So. Can you do it without bundling? I'm gonna go with probably not because we have too many things happening, don't we, right? So here's nine, and if I take nine of these guys and one of these and add it to that one over there, that's a bundle up, but that bundle then becomes what? This whole thing becomes another long stick like that, right? When I add that to the group, that becomes 10, which becomes that, it's like bundling. So that's kind of gone now. These are gone now, it's become one of those. Now I look at these guys and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these. So actually I could bundle all the long sticks up into what? Into one big square. So now what do I have left? I have one big square. I don't have any sticks, but then I have these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven of those and one of those. So I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I end up with 1.07. So, did I add the bundle? I sure did. Is it helpful to do that? Yep, that's just what I have to do. 
As a computation, you can see you have 0 0.38 plus 0 0.69. So 8 plus 9 is 17. So that's that first bundle we had to do. And then 1 plus 3 plus 6 is 10. That's the second bundle that we had to do. And 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1 for 1.07. But I lined up all my place values and my decimals, so it worked out just fine. Calculate it, I did that right there, and we check it with our work, and we're okay. Number four has find each sum. The larger square represents one, same idea, right? So let's see what we have here. We have two of these, and we have one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three there, and we have lots of these. So in this case, uh, I don't have enough of these to bundle together. I notice that I have 5, 9, and 1, so this becomes a bundle of 10. So this whole thing can bundle up to make another long stick like that, right? So we can kind of shade that out for now. Now I have 1, 2, 3, <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Can't do anything about that, so I can't bundle anything else. So I have two of these, that's my whole one point and I have nine of those I don't have any squares left so it's a zero and I have two of the thousands so 2.902 as a calculation here we have 6.03 plus 0 0.098 sometimes you notice that there's nothing here that's okay there's always zeros in fact I could add zeros and keep going it doesn't matter they can go forever but I don't need to but if it helps you kind of see things, it's good to put a little space, a placeholder there just so you can see how that lines up. Because 0 plus 8 is 8, 9 plus 3 is 12, I carry the 1, and so 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. Decimal comes straight down, and 6 plus 1 is 6. So to add up, I have 6.128. All right, and that works out just fine there. So that's a way to represent the um, addition. When I go to the next section here, we're going to skip the ready for more. We can represent subtraction by kind of unbundling some things, right? So same idea, same pictures as before. So here diagrams represent differences. So subtraction now, right? Remove pieces are marked with X's. For each diagram, write a numerical subtraction expression and determine the value of the expression. So for this first one, we had 1, 2, 3, 4. So this first one, we had 4 tenths, like this. And we can see we're taking away 1, 2, 3. So we're subtracting 4 tenths minus 3 tenths, which leaves you with 1 tenth. And that's our 1 tenth showing there. So this next one, B, these are our, our, our thousandths. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we had 8 thousandths to start with. And we can see we're removing 3 of them. So minus 0 0.003. And again, 8 minus 3 is 5, and 0, and 0, and keep your decimal. We have 5 left here. And for picture C, we had a 1 tenth, and then we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of the hundredths. But we got rid of 1, 2, 3, 4 of the hundredths, and 5 minus 4 is 1, and you can see 1 left over there, and we have 1 tenth left over there. Okay, so you can see that by, by looking at what you had to start with, that's our first number, and then what we cross off becomes what we subtract, and then the difference is what you're left with. Okay, so let's look at subtraction with some words here. Let's express each ex subtraction in words. All right, so we have tenths, hundredths, we have five hundredths minus two hundredths okay this is five hundredths minus two hundredths if you write that in words you would say five hundredths minus two hundredths okay this next one we have 24 of something rather so let's see what we have we have 24 and we have tens hundreds, thousands. So 24 thousandths minus 3 and 3 what? 3 
tens, hundreds, thousands as well. So you thousands like so. And here we have one, we write this as one and 26. So the one is the whole number, decimal we call and. This is 26, and we look at the last digit, is in which place? Not the tens, it's the hundreds. So one and 26 hundredths minus, and here we have 14 also hundredths. Okay. And number three, find the difference by drawing a diagram and calculating. Okay. So first we have five hundredths. Hundredths were our squares. So one, two, three, four, five. Subtracting two. So one, two. And we're left with how many? 0 0.03. Why? We could do it like this way. And we still have 0 0.03. Next one. This is two of the hundredths. So one, two, and four of the thousandths. One, two, three, four. It says to get rid of three thousandths. So one, two, and three. So what am I left with? I'm left with still two hundredths, and I'm left with one of the thousandths. As a computation, that's point zero point zero two four minus zero point zero zero three. Four minus three is one, two minus zero is two, zero, keep your decimal, and that's where we are. And C. This becomes the big square, and then we have one, and we have two, and then we have six hundredths, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And what do we get rid of here? We're getting rid of one tenth, which is that one, and four hundredths, one, two, three, four. So we're left with one point one and two. Doing them computation wise, it looks like this. 6 minus 4 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, keep the decimal, 1 minus 0 is 1, just like that. Okay, so that is really it for today's lesson. Again, it's kind of an optional one, just want to help you review adding, subtracting some decimal numbers and how that works with the base blocks. Okay, and so again, you can look at the summary, it gives you some more examples of how we can bundle or compose things up and group things up to become uh, another bundle here. So for example, we can find seven, 10 of these and turn it into another bundle, which is the same as carrying. It's the same idea as carrying that one um, when it comes to addition stuff. That's what we talked about there. Same is true as subtraction. We can also use it to kind of borrow or to unbundle things as well. I'm gonna pause there, you're gonna work on your homework, and we'll come back and check it together in just a few minutes. All right, here we go. Math 6 Unified Lesson 2 homework. We're going to use this key to help us answer the questions. The key is just like we practiced in the book earlier today. So what do we have? We have a tenth and a tenth. We have two tenths, so we can write 0 0.2 tenths. And these were our, our, oh sorry, not tenths. These are our hundredths. So sorry, got ahead of myself. So we don't have any tenths actually, right? So zero. These are our hundredths, and we have two of them. And these are our thousands. We have one, two, three, four, five of those ones. All right, and that's what we have right there. Draw a diagram that represents two tenths, one hundredth, and six uh, thousandths. So two tenths would be one, two, and then one hundredth is there, and six thousandths is one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that would work. And draw a diagram for this one. And we'll here are three tenths, which is one, two, and three. We have no hundreds. We have four thousandths. So one, two, three, four. Something like that would work. Number two. Here are diagrams that represent 0.137 and 0.284. Use the diagram to find the value of the two things added up together. All right. So using the diagram, we can see can we bundle anything up here? Well, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I could take all of these, right? And we could bundle them up and put them right over here as a nice square. So there's a bundle. 
So this kind of goes away because it became that. So we have one of those left there. How about the um, hundreds? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So we could take these 10 here and bundle it up into becoming a new one tenth. So again, this will kind of go away. And so what we're we left with, we have one, two, three, four. We have four tenths. We have two hundredths, one, two. And we have one thousandth, so point four two one. Does that work out okay? Sure it does. And again, we could calculate it using um, regular calculations, which we'll do in the next page here, calculate it vertically. So we calculate it vertically, that means lining up our decimals, seven plus four is 11, and then one plus three is four, plus eight is 12, and one plus one plus two is four, decimal stays there, and zero there. So, how is your reasoning in the first two questions different? How is it similar or the same? And you can see we're just doing a lot of bundling and making things work out. I'll let you get an answer for that one. All right, number three. For the first two problems, circle the vertical calculation where the digits of the same kind are lined up. Then finish the calculation. The last two find the sum using vertical. Okay, so we want to make sure basically that we want to make sure our decimals are lined up. This has 3.25, this is 1. But 1 is also 1.0 or 0. So we look here, the decimals are not aligned, they're diagonal, so that's not going to work. Here, they're definitely aligned and everything else seems to be okay. And here, that's the decimal, those are not aligned, so we'd say no. So we add them up, five, we can put a placeholder there if we want to, five plus zero is five, two plus zero is two, keep the decimal, and three plus one is four. Okay, so here we have 0 0.5, 1.15, looking for lined up decimals. So that looks like we're lined up and stacked. We could put a placeholder there, everything looks good right over here these decimals are not lined up so we'd say nope over here the decimals are not lined up so we'd say nope add up 0 and 5 is 5 5 and 1 is 6 keep the decimal 0 and 1 is 1 and we're good to go for C we're gonna make it vertical and, and add it up so we have 10.6 plus 1.7 I gotta make sure I line it up it's 1.7 right there so six plus three, seven, sorry, six plus seven is thirteen. Keep our decimal. One plus one is two, and one plus nothing is one. So twelve point three. And our last one we have one hundred and twenty-three plus zero point two. Well, our decimal for one twenty-three is right here. So zero point two is actually right here. We've got to line that up there. Put a space holder. Zero plus two is two. 3 plus 0 is 3, and then 2, and then 1. So you have 123.2. Number 4. Andre has been practicing his math facts. He can now complete 135 multiplication facts in 90 seconds. If Andre is answering a question at a constant rate, how many facts can he answer per second? Okay, so per second means that right now he's doing 135 every 90 seconds and we're wanting to know how many is he doing in one second is what we're trying to figure out there so because it becomes what we call that unit rate we can do 135 divided by 90 and 135 divided by 90 is actually equal to 1.5 uh, facts per second is what he's doing now Noah works at a constant rate and he does 75 facts in one minute. Now notice this was in seconds and this is in minutes. Who's working faster? Well, I don't want to compare seconds and minutes, I want to compare things the same. So Noah's doing 75 facts in not one minute but actually 60 seconds. So 75 divided by 60 is actually equal to what? 1.25. So Who's doing more facts in the least amount of time? That's going to be Andre. Andre is doing a faster rate here because Andre is the winner. He's doing 1.5 every second and Noah is doing 1.25 every second. So Andre is our winner. All right, and that's it for today. Hope you had a great day, and we'll see you next time.